is going on you guys it's your boy Avery LR32 here we are so close to 1,000 subscribers we are only four away destroy the ever-living crystal beast boo-boo stain out of that subscribe button so we can finally get to our goal of a thousand subscribers after someone made 11 alternate accounts and got me to a thousand and then Turns out we dropped back down to 989. But now we're at 996, so it's okay. We're only four away, and then I'm going to make a video, and it's going to be amazing. All jokes aside, thank you so much for all the support. It truly does mean the world to me. So I thought as a little prelude to getting to 1,000 subscribers, I want to show you all the goo, the big old goo that we are working on for the Kissimmee Regional. And uh, <laughs> I get so many weird looks when I talk about this. We're playing Crystal Beast Goo, or as I like to call it, Crystal Goo. <laughs> We're playing so many techs. There's so many different ways that you can go about this. I'm testing a couple different builds, and I'm going to talk about that in the deck profile. Um, shout out to Neshi, who showed off his undefeated locals deck profile, which gave me a lot of ideas too. And before he showed that off, our builds were the same, just a couple things were different. So, you know, I'm feeling really confident about this deck. And I'm going to be talking more about that near the end of the video, because I'm sure people are already rolling their eyes like, really, you're going to take Crystal Beast to regional? And... We're gonna go. We're gonna get into that later on in the video. So I highly suggest that you stick around, watch till the end. It will all make sense. Trust me. So let's go ahead and start off with this monster lineup here. So we're playing three copies of Sapphire Pegasus. Um, it's not a once per turn. It is a when, so it can miss fucking timing. <laughs> That's uh, that hasn't aged well. It's like Gear Town. Um, you use this to drop out the dragon and get a search, or drop out Carbuncle and pop it off Bridge of the Heart. It's it's your it's your MVP, honestly. Like it's it's like a gadget. It's really good. Two copies of Dragon, uh, with one copy of Cobalt Eagle. Um, I was bricking on three of these, and Cobalt is a way to play around TC Boo if you ever run into that being a thing, which you shouldn't, because like it's good. It's just we're going into a tier zero format. Like it's kind of whatever. So those cards are really good. Uh, one copy of Carbuncle because it's not once per turn. And we're playing the first bit of goo. The first bit of goo, ladies and gentlemen. We got three copies of Fenrir. Don't be looking on over here. You don't know what that card is. <laughs> uh, yeah, I paid 70 bucks a piece for these. I've been hauling my ass to get this deck done before the regional in Kissimmee on November 5th, which if you'll be there, be sure to come up and say hi. I love meeting people at events, especially my subscribers, or even just people that enjoy watching the content. Um, side note, I bought six boxes of Darkwing Blast today if you didn't see my YouTube short. I pulled two of these, so I plan on taking uh, two of these to the event and selling them and trying to make some of my money back. This card is disgusting. I am also testing a bigger buy steel engine, as you can see the Magnemite here. Um, this is really good going first against Rogue. It's especially good going second. Um, it also helps Rogue decks like Crystal Beast OTK um, because that's sort of something that's really difficult for the deck to do unless you pop off with like Carbuncle and get out multiple summons. This card is just overall fantastic. If you can't afford these, you can play Ash. Ash is better going into Rogue, but man, if you can get yourself some Fenrirs, Fenrirs are disgusting, my guy and girl. Um, we're playing two copies of Magnumut and then one copy of Druid Swarm. So I'm messing around with a bigger engine of this, that being three Magnuma with three, uh, excuse me, two Druid Worm, three Magnuma, and then one copy of Saroyner, uh, which is the branded one. It, it's just a 2,500 attack, 2,000 defense beat stick. Uh, you play it as like another buy steel card. Uh, and then I'm testing right now, side decking uh, another Druid Worm. So I am testing this engine. I like what it offers because it's just amazing interruption. And it's really good going against tier. And going into this regional, you have to keep in mind too that it's also the same weekend as the YCS in Pasadena. And so I have to kind of consider to myself at this point, am I going to be playing against more tier or am I going to be playing against more rogue? Because remember when we went to the Boca Raton regional, there was a YCS that same weekend and I ran into a shit ton of rogue. Like I only played against one meta deck and that was Brandon Despia. Everything else was rogue. So I have to kind of figure out how I want to make that call. But I am loving this engine. If I go with the bigger buy steel engine, I will cut the Fenrir's. Um, I just, I really hope I don't have to do that because I just love Fenrir so much as a card. But this engine is just disgusting. I think it's a good idea that Neshu was playing it and I've honestly fallen in love with it. And then we're playing three copies of D-Shifter, aka the card that wants to get hit by orange light so bad. So, um, you know, obviously if you have a way to get to Necro Valley, then, you know, orange light doesn't really matter. The milling cards in tier don't matter. If the opponent doesn't open Herald of the Orange Light, then this doesn't matter. Um... 
but it, it's still an amazing card. Like, I don't think that anyone can debate that. If you get this off, like, even if you open up Foolish Barrel Goods, which we're playing two copies of, you don't care because you're going to have the graveyard locked out. By the time it comes back to your turn, you're going to go Burial Goods to dump Bridge of Salvation to get to Necro Valley and a Crystal Beast and play the Necro Valley, and you never activate a monster effect in that process. So the tier player really can't do anything against you, whether they have Orange Light or Hoffenis. Um, so yeah, uh, D, D shifter is just, it's, it's amazing. Uh, and then of course we're playing the one brick, <laughs> the, the biggest garnet of all time, 4,000 attack, and we can't even summon the damn thing. Um, yeah, it's, it's literally just here for crystal ultimates. You have to play it. Konami, please give crystal beast, like something that isn't a brick and is still a boss monster. We're playing three copies of something that will never be once per turn because it doesn't need to be Uh rainbow bridge at any crystal spell trap from deck to hand. And it's not once per turn. So, yeah, just, just more thinning. Two Crystal Bond. People are like, Avery, play three. Play three. You don't need to play three this card because in order for you to search a Crystal Beast from deck to hand, you have to be able to play one from your deck to the Spell and Trap Zone with a different name. You only play, like, four or five different names. It's really not all that great. Uh, and then we're playing three copies of Crystal Ultimate. This is basically like another Foolish Barrel Goods for Bridge of Salvation. It can also get you to any Rainbow Bridge card, so it can get you to Bridge of the Heart. Um, this card is just fantastic. I love this card. It can special summon a Crystal Beast from anywhere. So usually if I'm using Bridge of the Heart to search for like a Crystal Beast Spell Trap, I'll usually just pop like a, a Carbuncle because this can special summon from a Hand Deck, Grave, or Spell and Trap Zone. So no matter where Carbuncle is, Carbuncle is going to go off. And then we have three copies of Rainbow Bridge of the Heart. This card is amazing. It's your MVP. Um... It's it's such a godsend for Crystal Bees. Like, yeah, you get the extra normal summon, that's cool. But man, being able to get a search of a spell or trap and be able to bounce a card, like, people don't know what your cards do. And it makes decks end on suboptimal boards. Like, at one point I was testing against Brandon Despian. He made Lubellion, activated the effect, ditched a card, and then, like, I think I had Conclave up at the time. So I sent Conclave to bounce a Crystal Beast and bounce his Lubellion back, and he had to get out Quertus. Like, yeah, that's still a decent play, but it's suboptimal. Same thing with Rainbow Bridge of the Heart. Just being able to put one in the back row and bounce one of your cards and bounce itself back so I can protect it in my hand instead of it being on the board for, like, Feather Duster. Oh, it's it's good. It's really damn good. And it's an auto win against Mystic Mind Burn decks, too. They literally don't have an out if you go first. Two copies of Foolish Barrel Goods. We're side decking the third. I think I'm going to cut the third out of the side because your side deck... Your 15 card side is so important. Why Why the hell am I playing a card that I'm already playing three more copies of in the form of ultimates? Um, I, I really don't think I'm digging three copies. The side deck is still a work in progress, so keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, goods is just a way to dump salvation. Or you can dump miracle so that if you put a crystal beast in the back row, you can banish miracle to put another one in the back row. So that's something to keep in mind. And then this is three prosperity. Uh, ignore these. These are prosperities. I'm still waiting on Super Games to get them in my mailbox. Um, it's disgusting. This is a deck that, like, you can maybe play extra, but man, you gotta get that one of six. You're a stun deck. You need all the gas to the floor that you can get. One Mystic Mine, and then one Necker Valley, aka the card that auto wins against tier. Uh, this is disgusting. Mine actually never really comes up, um, but I'm considering side decking Secret Village. Actually, I will side deck Secret Village, because I've already ordered it. Um, so, like, either one of these field spells that doesn't get the job done, you can throw in, like, a Secret Village and move on with your day. And then for the traps, we play two copies of Crystal Miracle. It's an Infernity Barrier that's not once per turn. It's really cute. And then we're playing three copies of the deck name itself, Crystal Conclave, aka Conclave Control, and then another brick, Bridge of Salvation. Although this isn't really too much of a brick because we are side decking Super Poly. So, you know, if you open with it, then, you know, you could go Acme Super Poly, ditch it. I was main decking Super Poly. Um, I feel like the Buy Steel engine is just so much better just because of the fact it can interact with the opponent on their turn. Um... I still love Super Poly for whatever it, for what it is. I mean, it's just such a fire card. And then for the extra deck, uh, th there's a couple things we need to discuss here as we go through this. Um, one Abyss Dweller. Abyss Dweller is really good. One Baguska. One Chidori. One Tornado Dragon. One Cowboy for game. Uh, one Chakanine. One Zeusy Boy. One Access Code. Yes, this is the original Secret Rare because Cool Stuff only had the Secret Rare, so ha, I paid $80 and... This is an investment. I'm never getting rid of this thing. Uh, one Mascarena, one Phoenix. This is going to become the uh, Wind Charmer Verdant because that's a spellcaster. So 
you make um, you either use Cobalt and Sapphire Pegasus or two Sapphire Pegasus and Tunia Wind. You make the uh, Wind Verdant uh, Charmer, and then you can activate Secret Village and lock the opponent out of spells. Uh, one Unicorn, one Garuo, one Mud Dragon for the Super Poly targets, and then these are supposed to be Borbo. And then this will either be if I decide to keep in Phoenix the uh, Wind Charmer Verdant. Um, or it will be uh, some other exceed or link that I want to play. I'm still kind of debating on it. But yeah, definitely cut these for Borbo and just something else. And then finally for the side deck here, as I said, it's still a work in progress. The main deck is, I think, for the most part, done. Um, side deck here is another Druid Worm. Like I said, I'm testing it. I really like the Buy Steel engine and what it offers. Uh, three copies of Super Poly because it's disgusting. Three copies of Dark Ruler. I'm thinking I may switch this to Lightning Storm because Dark Ruler with Evenly is good. Dark Ruler on its own is kind of booty booty butt cheek. So it's it's a shame that Dark Ruler is kind of starting to fall out of favor. Um, but I feel like Lightning Storm just can kind of get the job done more. So yeah, they, these might get changed to Lightning Storms. Um, one goods. We're gonna cut this. Uh, I just I don't. I don't know, like, it's it's in the testing phase, man, but, like, why am I wasting a spot on this? It just seems really bad. Uh, one Feather Duster, because it's back row hate. Uh, one D Fisher, along with one Macrocosmo, because our homie Valley D had to go and sell the DD Grounds that he said that he was going to hold for us. Thanks, Derek. I, I appreciate it, bro. No, I'm just playing. I'm just busting his balls. He got a good deal for it. He made a lot of money off the uh, off the trade interaction that happened, so I... You, you do you, boo-boo. You got to do what you got to do to get your money. So I, I don't blame you. Want a pointer? This seems okay. I mean, it's a one of now. Like, do, do I really care? It, it feels like I could spend that slot better. Uh, and then three copies of Evenly. That ain't changing. That, 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 that card's amazing. So, you guys, this is my Crystal Beast, Bi-Steel, I really want to beat Tier Element the deck. <laughs> um... I'm, I'm sure that, like, Crystal Beast enthusiasts are going to be like, it's not really a Crystal Beast deck. But, I mean, I'm not going to play the combo version because the combo version is just really bad. And that sucks to say because the Overdrive Overdragon thing is so just amazingly busted. Being able to shuffle everything back and bring out five Crystal Beasts and swing for game is good. But yet you can get nibbed to fucking hell and back. And I don't feel like getting Nibiru and just, like, breaking my thumb again. So because I will, like, rage and get pissed off. So I'd rather, like, do something where I stand a chance. Now, to all the people, like I said at the beginning of the video, that were saying, you know, Avery, you're going to lose. Avery, WTF are you doing? I want you to hear me out on this, right? Because I I've gotten so many weird looks, and I've gotten so many people saying, this deck's going to be a buy if you play this at the regional. Like, like it's not going to work out. Here's my thing. Keep in mind that, you know, I played Trickstar when Trickstar first came out. There was a regional in Kissimmee. That was the first regional of the season. And I came in, like, I think it was 18th place with Pure Trick Star when Zodiac was tier zero. I ended up losing to Blackwing. I don't know how that happened. And then, like, five rounds later, I lost to True Draco. Everything else I beat. I played Zoo. I played True Draco. Like, I, I played all meta there at that particular event. And I did really well. And so I feel like the same concept's going to apply here. You know, I'm, am I going to come in first place at the regional? No. Am I going to get my invite? I'm confident that I can at least get my invite. I don't know if I'm in a top eight. I don't know about any of that. But when I have taken a deck that people have seen as under the radar or not as good, I have gotten rewarded for it. My invites, not really necessarily tops, have been like with Cosmo when that was still kind of a tier one deck. I had some tough opponents that I ended up beating. Um, and I went like X and three and I squeezed in at 47th. My next top, my next invite, excuse me, I should say, was with Trickstar. I came in like 18th place, went X2 out of nine rounds. Uh, and then I got mine with Branded Eldritch, where I went X2-1 out of like seven rounds, eight rounds in Boca Raton. People didn't know what my stuff did. And I feel like the same concept can apply here with this. So, you know, people are going to shrug it off and say, yeah, whatever. And they may end up making misplays because of it. And if they do, I'm going to take advantage of it. So it's just a matter of determining how much tier I think I'm going to be playing against. Because if I do, I'm going to play more buy steel cards. If not, I'm going to be playing more uh, Cash Tira Fenrir's. So guys, let me know what you think about this build down in the comments. Is there a way that I can improve it? I'm going to be taking this build to Locals tomorrow and trying it out and make some changes to the side deck tonight. And then I'll test this out and then determine if I want to play more buy steals or not. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit that like and ding dong notification taco bell. Be part of the A gang, as I heard one of my subscribers say to me. I like that.
the A-Gang. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.